Hello everybody. This is what will um, become my salt water reef tank. I only have one coral colony left. Uh, I had a little collection going on and I was going to wait to record to show off all the colors and the different stuff but a lot of them crashed and died um, during the recent heat wave that hit my house. I'm upstairs, you know, in a room that used to be part of the attic. So, <sighs> a little too close to the sun up here. It got really hot. And that's all you need for bad parameters and too many different fluctuations to kill your culture, man. Um, I guess I'll look a little bit closer to give you a better look. My two new arrivals. I really love this guy. Or, I mean, he could be a she from the looks of the color. This is the Potter's Angelfish. The majority consider them to be very difficult to keep uh, alive in captivity. Uh, so, a lot of stuff that I've read says that, you know, if you can get them to eat, that doesn't mean that they're going to make it. Um, if you can eat, the, if, you, if you not eat them, if you can get them to eat a captive diet, um, that's a really, you know, good step in the right direction. That's what you got to do. Um, but I'll be feeding this guy live food. So to just be 100% that he's not going to starve himself. Um, from Hawaii, he was found at a depth anywhere from 3 to 10 feet deep to 100 feet or even deeper quite possibly um came all the way from hawaii man it's just cr I'm, I'm so happy that he survived the shipping uh, process um i've had one before and you should have seen the one that i had before he was maybe half the size of this one and this one is a, is a really small one he's maybe two inches he's, just, he's a baby um but the first one i tried he had stunning colors man i mean turquoise these colors they were just you know from a fish that you aren't seeing the actual photo of you know you just kind of going out on a wing it's gonna be like a surprise what your fish looks like to you when you receive it um, for a fish that you know I ordered like that he was really good looking probably the best you could hope for you know like that but uh, he died unfortunately he was part of the statistic this one looks like she is doing much better than the other one. She's swimming around out in the open, picking on things. She's not really hiding completely. You know, um, angelfish uh, love um, greens, man. Uh, they're omnivores, but sometimes they can really turn like completely herbivore on you if you don't have a consistent supply of food to keep them content along with plenty of algae in the tank for them to pick at during the day I don't know if I've said this before in this video because this is like the tenth recording of the very same thing that I'm doing uh, yeah so anyways um yeah I mentioned that before I guess in a different light yes there is a little bit of light left in the world. Yes, there is. 
you know. Um, this is where it's at, man. This is my this is my little world right here. I love this stuff. I love marine biology. It's gotten me back into getting my education. Um, really trying to sharpen myself up and get ready uh, for what I need to do. You know, this stuff may seem impulsive to a lot of people. Uh, Saltwater uh, stuff, but it's really not, man. I have a lot of trial and error experience. And since I started to have several errors from the very beginning, um, I now know what it is I'm looking at extensively. I'm not an expert. But I've had these guys since the very beginning. My clowns. Got them when they were a little bitty. Now, this one turned into the female, being hermaphroditic. Clownfish are born all males. And, uh, yeah, you don't want to have more than two in one tank, unless you have a humongous tank the point to where they can have separate territories you know but they pair up and they bond with one another and one will assume the form of the female this is the female right here she's the bigger one she's the more dominant one you now you can have a hundred males in one aquarium and they'll all get along but you know you have a whole bunch of females you know that's a different story they will kill each other man vicious uh, the female I guess during her change, um, maybe uh, she was getting aggressive, uh, but she really started to beat up on the on the little male clownfish. Um, and she really ate off one of his fins, kind of like Nemo. Now Nemo has one little tiny fin. Uh, she chewed his down to a nub, picked on him a lot while she was going through the hermaphroditic stage, changing. Yeah, I still have them. They've been through the worst. They've been through everything with me. If I can say anything about these particular clowns, the Ocellaris clowns, they're really hardy fish. And of course, everyone's, you know, favorite sometimes. I love them, man. They keep me good company. And this here is my new sea urchin. It's called the Halloween urchin. Now, I don't see anything Halloween about it, but uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. I like him. He's just chilling. He's probably about two inches, you know, big around. Um, max size is like five to six inches. <laughs> just imagine a softball size sea <laughs> urchin <laughs> sitting in this little 55 gallon tank that's okay one day I'm going to upgrade and only go you know there's only only more room to improve never worse this is my last colony of coral my last zoanthid colony like I've said, we had the heat wave, a lot of stuff went downhill, fluctuated too much, crashed, died, infections, bacteria, not good. So this is the last bit of coral that I had along with this much of him that's been propagated. And you can see in the so, sort of close to the center part of him, um, it looks like it has this white, uh, like a very light uh, film over it. That is actually a fungus that was attacking my other colonies. And it looks like it's trying to grow on this little guy, which I propagated, and that's probably why. It's in a, it was in a slight moment of weakness, and it's just trying to capitalize on my poor little corals. And they haven't opened up completely. I gave them a good dip in uh, hydrogen peroxide, saltwater mix, along with... Uh, this, um, this stuff called uh, Coral Revive. 
it's like a cleaner really it doesn't cure anything but yeah I did have to clip off some of them uh, just to spare this this last you know bit of them but it's okay I, I didn't have to remove too much you know just enough to save the majority but yeah that's me that's my little world this is Mike I'm alive not doing so well sometimes but Godspeed brother this stuff can be expensive can be a lot of work but it doesn't have to be so much on the latter end of all of those deals like I said uh, if you have any questions and you're interested in saltwater keeping you know fish only or you know fish and other invertebrates uh, that's definitely you know you can ask me anything and I can definitely point you in the right direction to save you a lot of trouble and money if you're into this stuff the coral is different um, your tank has to be mature for this type of stuff you know and they, all of these things even the rocks you know they're a lie and they all exist and their existence with one another you know they they benefit each other with the right amount of flow provided by wave makers like this thing and that one over there in the corner and this thing which used to be a power head I converted it to a wave maker with this attachment on the end you know you got good flow you got the right temperature consistency is what you're looking for if you have too many ups and downs like too hot too cold or too high level of, of toxic things in in the water you know if you don't change your water enough you know what I mean but a lot of that comes with being impulsive and not patience and let me tell you patience is the key thing to saltwater keeping now, if you just jump into it like I did you're gonna run into some issues that you wish you would have been aware of and known what to look for you know so but it's okay because what started out as my little hobby you know God granted you know that it be more of you know what I want to do with my life I love this stuff the study of life man I love these guys it's cool to get to know the ins and the outs such an unknown world man the ocean now hopefully the next video I make of this um, I'll have a lot more color going on a lot more activity this is the recovery process thank you all for watching thank you all for looking at this beautiful angelfish I think she will do just fine as long as I can keep her content you can see all that algae in the back you would think ew gross you don't take care of your tank right you don't clean your tank right. Uh, that's not necessarily true. Um, yeah, as long as you have light <laughs> in water, <laughs> algae's gonna grow. But it's okay because it's a it's a little snack for my angel. Um, you know, my little buddies they're chilling. They're they're doing good. I hope you guys like the new black aragonite sand that I put down. It's much more coarse than the white sand that's what's underneath. Um, but yeah, man, I can really turn you on to these things. If you're interested in this stuff, just let me know, man. Just message me. It doesn't have to be a public deal. Thank you for watching, though. I know I'm boring. But yeah, I miss some people. I love some people. I miss some people more, and I love some people more. But thank you, though. And God be with you, man. Lord, Lord be with you. God speed. Jesus' name. Remember that. Thank you.